Hello, my name is Mark Pimatel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can program a milled part only from the sketch. So CAMWorks and SOLIDWORKS CAM are fully integrated inside SOLIDWORKS. That gives us the ability to work off of solids, but that might not always be something that's available to you. You might be getting a DWG or a DXF file that you have to translate into sketch geometry for SOLIDWORKS. Uh, and then from there, you could easily create a solid. Uh, this this uh, sketch I have on screen could easily become a solid. Uh, but if you just need to get the thing programmed or you're not really doing any kind of heavy 3D work, Sometimes you can just skip the solid step and get right into programming right off the sketch. So let's see how that can be done with a simple sketch like this one. So on screen, I have just a, a sketch, it's just a 2D representation of a part that uh, that typically could be made. I have the different kinds of features that we would normally encounter. So how we're going to turn this into a CamWorks part, let's take a look. So if I get into my CamWorks tab, uh, first thing I want to do is set up my coordinate system. So the coordinate system Pretty easy. Normally we would choose something like a top face, or here we can easily just choose our corner. So that could become our our, uh, our origin there. And it really is just coming from the sketch as well. And if the sketch was on a different plane other than the, uh, the main planes from SOLIDWORKS, um, then I can just choose things like this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, and then as soon as you have x and y, the right-hand rule says that is my z-axis. So that's easy enough there. Uh, but if it wasn't on the right plane or you didn't have any straight lines, you have all kinds of different options in here to create that coordinate system. Now we have a coordinate system. Let's go to our stock. In my stock manager, I can reference the fixture coordinate system that I just created, and then I can give this thing some length and some depth. Uh, so let's just read right off the sketch here. That is about 10 inches. So in my X positive direction, I'm going to make that 10 inches. Let's grab the length on this side. That is 10 inches as well. So let's make that 10 inches. And then let's say we're making this out of uh, one inch of material. So one inch down. There we go. So one inch block of material, 10 by 10. That'll be the size of our stock. Click the green check mark. So even though I don't have a solid, I'm using something that represents the stock in the background. So when I go to do my simulations, I have something I can use. So now that I have all that, let's add our mill part setup. Uh, so same sort of thing here. If you've got the main planes already part of your SOLIDWORKS model, or in this case, the sketch, I can just use those planes to orient my mill part setup. The only thing to remember here is planes don't have any thickness. So what you want to do is when you choose your plane, always reference that arrow. If I want the tool to be going in that direction, then that's correct. Uh, you always have the ability to, to do a flip off of a surface there. Um, now, I have this usually set to predetermine a, a perimeter, but this thing is not a solid, so it won't really let me do that. So I'm going to have to turn this off. So there are some limits to um, programming with this uh, sketch, and that is anything that's trying to reference that solid, um, it won't be able to do that. So this really is only for 2.5D applications. But with all that done, let's take a look at how we're going to add those features. So normally, we'd like to go to Extract Machinable Features, but again, this is looking at the solid, and there is no solid. So I have to do everything manually. But there is a benefit here to actually having this full sketch. Because that sketch is available, when I click on that, it recognizes it as any of the features I'm looking to create. So in this case, I'm really just looking to make those pockets. So now it recognizes all those sketches as pockets. Now this outside one, that was going to be my perimeter. It won't really let me do that. I don't want to do that as a pocket in here. So when I actually generate this, I'm going to do the same thing we normally do with extract machinable features and let it grab everything and then just exclude that what I don't want. Um, so let's go to end condition. This thing, let's make this only a quarter of an inch deep. We'll go with those strategies there. You can see it's representing those pockets there. I'll just click the green check mark. And now it brought in all those features. So let's take a look. So that, square, that circular pocket there, that's my half inch uh, hole. Uh, I don't want to do that as a circular pocket. So I'll get rid of that one. And this irregular pocket here, uh, that's the size of my stock but I do want to do that open slot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one as well. And now we're just going to go in and manually add those. So this is the same sort of functionality we normally have. We can grab sketches, we can grab edges of solids to represent, represent these things. Uh, so let's do this as a corner slot. And I'll just grab from my sketch here. 
And because it exists in my model as sketch geometry, I can grab it. Even if it's part of an overall sketch, you can see that it's recognizing it as just components there. So we'll do the same sort of thing here. That strategy looks okay. We'll make that a quarter of an inch. And now I have a corner slot. For that hole, same sort of thing. So I'll just go into two and a half. We're looking to make a hole. Again, if I grab this, it won't really recognize it because that whole thing, that's not all holes. But I can go over here and just grab just that one. So it recognizes that component there as a hole. I'll drill this. Let's just make this simple. We'll make everything a quarter inch. So now it will use my drill strategy to do that hole. So now I have all of those features already defined simply from the sketch. And I'm already programming at this point. I didn't have to go and make that solid. I'm working right off just the sketch geometry. And then from here, it's the same sort of thing, the same buttons on the top. We just skipped extract machinable features. We'll go to generate operation plan. So it made all those operations. And now let's make the tool path. Okay, and then from there, we can take a look at our stock solid, and we can see that it's doing all the same sort of work it normally does. So just because it's a sketch doesn't mean we can't still program off of it. It has its limitations. It can only really be for 2.5D because the nature of 2.5D means we're programming in X and Y just with a depth or a height. We get the same sort of functionality here. We can see that it's going to do all those features there, and then the last thing it's going to do on this part is that drilled hole. But from there, we have a part. We could generate the code, send it out to the shop. And all I had to do was just load and translate the DWG and the DXF. To see a little more of an elaborate uh, application of this, I have a, a sketch that would have been generated um, either by hand and then translated into a DXF DWG. However, this was created. This is a rather large sketch. To go in here, I'd have to try and figure out which one of these makes pockets and extrude that. Uh, the whole thing would be a mess. So all I did here was translate the DXF into an engrave feature. And that engrave feature generated my contour mill. And from my engraving strategy, I now have an engraving strategy for this sheet metal part. So uh, with this um, 10 thou end mill representing my, my wire, my laser, whatever I'm putting this thing on, I can now generate this pretty quickly simply just by translating the DXF and just going through and selecting the sketch, getting it to recognize all that for me. And now I have code I can send to my laser, my plasma, my water jet, whatever I'm doing. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call on the main tech line. If you like these videos, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.